I think you call it Einsteining in the book. So yes. can you talk a little bit about how, because you do still need to use your conscious analytical mind, uh, but it needs yes. to be used at the right time. So can you talk about how the two kind of blend together? You know that you actually need to use both parts of your mind, the conscious and the unconscious to putt your best and actually have the most confidence on the greens. In this video, I'm going to show you exactly how. Hey, I'm Michael Leonard, creator of Wicked Smart Golf, and I have a simple mission. I want to help millions of players have more fun, play better, and shoot more consistently without swing changes. One of the best ways to do that is learning how to master your putting. Because about 40 to 50% of all shots happen on or around the green. Your putting literally is a make or break aspect to it. But a lot of us get way too overcomplicated and we try and control everything and we let all these negative thoughts creep in. Now, recently I learned about something called the look and shoot putting method. It was actually developed by Aaron Badley's old putting coach and it literally has transformed my game because he helps you learn how to use your conscious mind and your unconscious mind to actually make the most of your performance on the greens. So as you'll see in this podcast clip, he talks about how we need to use the conscious mind to analyze the putt, to read the putt, and then we need to let our subconscious take over. The subconscious is way more powerful part of the brain and that's the creative, the imaginative side. That's how you get in the zone when it comes to sports, specifically with golf too. And he has a proven system and I wanna show you a short clip from our full interview, which you can check out on Apple Podcasts or Spotify by clicking down in the link below. Enjoy this clip. And I like too, when I was rereading it, uh, I, I hadn't remembered the term that you made for it, but I definitely do this as part of my routine. I think you call it Einsteining in the book. So can yes. you talk a little bit about how, because you do still need to use your conscious analytical mind, uh, but it needs yes. to be used at the right time. So can you talk about how the two kind of blend together? So some of my biggest detractors, people that you know don't like what I have to say, think that I'm I'm asking golfers to go out there and just hit, hit the ball and be happy without any thought at all, and it's completely false. So Einstein is when you're behind the ball, and I like to imagine a line between you when, when you're behind the ball and the ball. So I just imaginary line. And so when you're behind the line, you can do whatever you like. You can have practice swings. You can think about your technique. You can think about what you're going to have for dinner. You can think about what you had for dinner last night. You can make a phone call. You can check your phone for stats. You can write down your score. You can do whatever you want. But, but at some point, you do have to have a very clear intention of what you're trying to do. Um, and then once you cross that line, that's when you start your secondary task. So you're counting, singing. Um, you're focused on the window in your face. You're doing something else that distracts your, you know, your analytical mind, your conscious mind for the duration of the shot. So yeah, Einsteining is just a term I use to, it's basically the thinking phase of each shot. But it's, but it's done behind the ball. It's not done over the ball because most of us are doing it when we're walking to the ball and or that, over the ball or during the swing. Yeah. I mean, I wish I could like have go back. To, I mean, I don't really want to think about what my putting was before all of this, but yeah. I remember literally standing over the ball and I think I had always learned or been told to focus on, you know, the part of the hole or focus on the ball rolling in. Like everything I tried just never seemed to work because like you said, I was always kind of thinking or, you know, a lot of times you'd be like, hit, make sure to hit it or don't hit it too hard or don't three putt. And you just have all this nonsense going around in a monkey mind. And so what I love about that is like, like you said, there's that clear line and it's that I do my thinking. And then as soon as I get up, we're just, we're, we're doing that secondary task, which I think is so easy, but so great if people will trust it. I just don't think a lot of people will, uh, will tr or have learned to trust it because like you said, it goes against kind of the, the technique side of, of teaching and yeah. putting. And this is the thing. This is why I think look and shoot has been so popular. Um, the feedback I get, is absolutely, especially in the last two years has blown me away. I get pretty much in emails every day um, from golfers all over the world telling me how it's what it's done for their putting. But I think the reason it works so well is that it still allows you to be analytical if you're that kind mm -hmm. of golfer. So if you're an accountant type and you like numbers and you like um, going deep with your technique, yep, yeah, and they're everywhere, um, you know, you can still do it. I'm giving you permission to be as technical as you want. But the deal is that you've got to stop as you start walking to the ball. And the walk to the ball, I believe, with all golf strokes is the most important phase of the swing or the putt. And there's a really important reason for, for this, why, why, I think it, why I think it's the most important. And I haven't heard anyone else ever say this. 
Um, I've stopped reading golf magazine and golf books. So other golfers or other performance coaches may have said this, but I don't. I have never heard anyone else say this. But the reason it's the most important part of the stroke, or the or the hit, or the swing, or the drive, is that it enables your system to go from thinking to phase into automatic. So the walk to the ball is a little time that just gets you out of the thinking mind, mindset into um, completely automatic. Because it's not, it, it can't, it's not always like a light switch. It's not mm-hmm. on and, and then off. It just might take a little bit of time to phase in. And that's why I think, and at least in my coaching, yeah, the walk to the ball is so important. So the walk is kind of like the bridge from your analytical to going into the field and just trusting. Correct. It's, it's where you go from a, an accountant into an artist. And I love that. That is perfect. Yeah. And I think another. Oh yeah, yeah, but yeah, you, yeah, exactly. So that's where you uh, go from one to the other, exactly. And so, would you consider that kind of like how how Tiger and how elite players get in the zone? They're they're not thinking; they're just out there playing and reacting. A hundred percent. But like it's when they're playing well. Like Tiger's a great example, but he's also a bad example because he was so bloody good for so long, and he, he was almost at the He's almost at the freak level. Like it's like no one can get near, could ever get near him. But I mean, you could use a guy like maybe uh, Bubba. He, he, I saw Bubba play in Australia in 2008. And I wrote about him in 2008. And I said, this guy is going to be amazing. Um, he already was amazing, but he was going to be like super amazing because I think he like won the, 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 um, the web.com or what, you know, the secondary tour. He was up, up there then. He came to Australia mm-hmm. and he, he nearly won an event here. But um, yeah, like when, when, they're, when they're going well, you know, almost any golfer, Justin Thomas, all of them, you can just name them all. They're, they're, they're at some level of automation when they're playing. It's just that when they play badly, they tend to get out of it. Um, and they, they, they talk about their swing changes or I'm going to go and work on my putting for two hours. And the media love this sort of thing. They love the stories. But, yeah, I don't know um, if many really truly understand it. But, um, yeah, these guys, the guys that we see on TV every week, they are rock stars when they're, you know, they're in the moment, they're in the zone, they're fully automatic and they're, they're true artists when they're playing the game. You're, you're so right. The media loves to just applaud more practice because that's always the way to, uh, and then amateurs think that that's what they have to do as well. And, and like, yeah. uh, like we've learned, that's definitely not always the case. Remember, you need to use both the conscious and the unconscious mind to become a great putter. Now, a lot of people think that this look and shoot putting method just means you go brain dead and you just kind of go out there and hit it and feel it. That's not the case. You first have to Einstein your way to success. You have to read the putt. So for example, when I am reading a green, I like to look at it from behind. I squat down, I read it, I check it out from the low side. Then I try and actually pace it off if I can and not walk in other people's lines so I can say to my mind, all right, we got 18 feet, it's left to right, it's uphill. I try and give my mind a clear picture of what we want to achieve with that putt. Once you cross that imaginary line, then it's time to let the conscious mind hand it over to the subconscious. Think about it like a handshake. It's like, hey, thanks for your help, I got this. That's actually something I even said to myself before is I got this. By that, I'm implying, hey, my subconscious is going to take over from now, and that is how you putt your best. If you're interested in learning more about the look and shoot putting method, take a look at the link down below where you can learn more about it from Cameron's website. Again, I only talk about products that I fully believe in and endorse, and this one has transformed my game and dropped an average of four shots per round. So again, I'm very grateful for it, and it's something simple that you can learn today. If you have any questions, hit the comment box down below. I would love to know. Also, don't forget, Wicked Smart Golf is live on Amazon, Kindle, and paperback with audiobook coming soon. Thanks again for watching, and as always, I hope you have an epic day on the links.